This video shows you how the Warriors' young talent is showing out and why it's scary for other title contenders not only this year, but into the future. Whether they're in the pros, the G League, or on the injured reserve, these four players aged 22 or younger represent the next era of Warrior basketball. Kuminga and Moody are dominating in the G League, and while Jordan Poole is already a big contributor, once Curry's long gone, Jordan's going to have the reins as the main point guard. Here's the details on all that, and stay tuned to see the most overwhelming aspect of the young dubs at the end. Before continuing, only 14.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. The Warriors' two selections from the 2021 NBA Draft may not be posting insane numbers with the big team, but at the minor league level in Santa Cruz, the number 7 pick in Kuminga and the number 14 pick in Moody are dominating. The reason the Warriors had two picks in the top 15 this year is because while they own the number 14 pick naturally after barely missing the playoffs, the number 7 pick came via the Minnesota Timberwolves in the Andrew Wiggins trade on February 6th of 2020. And what a damn good deal that's looking like for Bob Myers, who's helped get the Warriors a potential superstar if properly developed in the product of the G League Ignite, Jonathan Kuminga. Jonathan's had some reps in the pros, as Steve Kerr even said he was impressed with how Kuminga played against the Magic. Kerr said, quote, He's got that sort of shocking athleticism that's rare even in the NBA where there's so many great athletes. JK stands out. There's just a suddenness to his burst. Oh, pause. Whether it's catching and going, or he had that tip dunk where his head was next to the rim. I thought his minutes were really good, and I love the way he played and prepared for the game. He's coming along. It's going to be a process for him. He's so young. As it is for most guys, there's so much to learn. It's not possible for anyone at 19 to come in and really understand everything that needs to happen to win NBA games. We have a very unique situation. It's very rare that the seventh pick in the draft goes to the team with the best record in the NBA. The flip side of him not playing as much as his colleagues who were drafted near him is that he's learning in a winning environment, and there's a lot of pluses in that regard." End quote. With the Santa Cruz Warriors in the minors, Moody and Kaminga combined for 62 points in their last game. Down the stretch of the third quarter, Kuminga hit his matchup with a double crossover and drained a smooth pull-up three with a hand in his face. Then on the very next possession, after getting the steal, Kuminga pulled off something ridiculous. A reverse windmill, just absolutely ridiculous. Those two sequences just go to show you the versatile offensive repertoire that Kuminga has in his bag. JK's a crazy athlete, and he's becoming more and more polished in terms of his mechanics off the dribble. Kuminga should be able to spend the rest of this G League season building up and getting comfortable with his mechanics, and the man could potentially be a Patrick McCaw-esque option come this year's postseason. Kuminga's 6'11 wingspan and 38-inch vertical jump could be extremely valuable in the Dubs rotation at some point, considering they already have lengthy wings like Porter Jr. and Wiggins. Adding Jonathan to the mix could make the Dubs even more intimidating in terms of their length on the perimeter. Kuminga finished with 25 points on 11 for 22 shooting in Santa Cruz's dub over the Agua Caliente Clippers. In that game, the player who the Warriors took seven picks later in this year's draft, Moses Moody, scored an eye-popping 37 on 12 for 28 from the field and 5 of 11 from three-point range. We saw JK get out in the passing lanes a minute ago, but watch Moses Moody's instincts on this possession just perfectly fakes out the inbounder by acting like he isn't paying attention before mercilessly jumping into the passing lanes. When he gets the rock, he takes one smooth dribble that takes up about 10 to 15 feet of space before gathering and going up with a springy poster dunk at the basket. It's the combined athleticism on the wing of both Moody and Kuminga that will eventually be a huge piece to this Warriors team. But just to have Moody and Kuminga waiting on the wings just makes you think about how well GM Bob Myers is setting up the end of Stephen Curry's career to be. Just think about when Steph's 40. Jonathan and Moses should be well-rounded vets by that time. The job the Warriors front office has done is something we shouldn't take for granted because I remember when the Lakers and Mitch Kupchak did a pretty bad job surrounding Kobe Bryant with the adequate roster to end his career. LA may have had an old Steve Nash and a valuable, yet fairly limited offensively Dwight Howard, but Kobe's roster from 2013 to 2016 had no depth and the team was starting a rebuild from square one in Kobe's latter years. That's a damn shame. 
Conversely, another all-time great talent in Stephen Curry with the Warriors has been surrounded with an all-time great defensive player in Draymond, an all-NBA partner next to him in the backcourt in Clay, and a deep roster absolutely packed with fluid shot creators who've got elite scoring instincts. Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins are the top two guys next to Steph without Clay. However, the X-Factors who come off the dub's bench are almost just as valuable. Gary Payton II continues to be one of the league's best defensive players in the backcourt. Then there's Damian Lee's off-ball cutting to the basket and three-point shooting, Belly's sniping from deep range, Kevon Looney's ability to catch everything down low and rebound the you-know-what out of the ball, and a revitalized Otto Porter Jr. headline the current role players intact for the big club. But while they're in the G League now, I'm predicting Moody and Kuminga are going to be focal points in Steve Kerr's system before you know it. Can't wait till they get there, but that's why they used to call it the Development League before Gatorade became a sponsor. Going down to the minors and developing their game is a great route for Kuminga and Moody to take. So don't interpret the fact that they're dominating in the minor leagues as an example of them just feasting on easy competition, but give Kuminga and Moody some respect for doing their job in their assignment to the G. Now for a breakdown on a bona fide young phenom who's getting it done for an organization with six championships in Jordan Poole. On a non-typically efficient 5 for 14 shooting night, Poole managed to put up 20 points against Portland in the dub's last game, marking the ninth time he's done that already. Last year in 2021, over the 51 games Poole played, he finished with that same total of nine 20-point outings. In 21-22, however, Jordan has another 70% of the season to build off that total. Jordan's smooth bucket manufacturing, whether he's working off flex actions and catching and shooting threes off the ball, or creating himself with smooth dribble combos and elusive pull-ups off the bounce, that's led him to 330 pieces against the Raptors, Pistons, and Hornets so far. He's learning how to be a top scoring threat at the NBA level on the fly, yet Poole's development from his rookie and sophomore campaign is as clear as day as the 22-year-old is getting his own seemingly with ease. Just like Stephen Curry, you can't give Jordan Poole an inch of space to let it fly, and if you do, the man's gonna make you pay every day of the week. Additionally, Poole's killer instinct also resembles the greatest three-point shooter of all time, and Golden State snagging Jordan down at pick number 28 two and a half years ago just displays the eye for talent that the Dubs front office has had for a decade now. Poole's the most overwhelming aspect to the Warriors' young talent, but you could also go with James Wiseman. I'm not completely sold on Wiseman yet, but he adds more rebounding, and Steph and other Warrior ball handlers could always use another screen setter. Of course, Moody and Kuminga are solid answers as well, but who's the most overwhelming threat amongst the young dubs in your opinion? Best answer gets next vid shoutout. The top three commenters with the most shoutouts by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Blyon79. Pause to read his great take about the Houston Rockets. Thanks for every great answer. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops to stay updated on the Speaks competition and the NBA. That's at DFlowHoops, links down below. This was DFlow, hope you all have a great one, and I'll see you next video.